Welcome to another episode of the House Huddle Podcast. Here are your hosts, Rob Schwartz and Justin Oniemi. Two Bears fans who decided talking into a microphone was better than shouting at their television. Hello, Hellas Huddle listeners. Uh, this is Justin on Yemi. I'm doing a solo short here. Uh, hopefully you've been enjoying Rob and I with our uh, Hellas Huddle podcast, Breaking Down Bears Football. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed Rob's short the other day where he did the all 22, looking at the right guard position, Tevin Jenkins versus Lucas Patrick. Um, when Rob introduced the concept of a short, he said it would be a 15 to 20 minute podcast and it could be on a variety of topics. So uh, today's topic is one that I would like to kind of rant about. And I'm not sure if it's going to be enjoyable for you go- for you all, because I'll be honest with you, it's not going to be enjoyable for me um, to even talk about it. And what I want to talk about is uh, what we witnessed on Thursday, Thursday night football with Tua Tungo Vailoa and uh, the very, very scary injury that occurred on Thursday. First of all, um, I just want to point out that he should not have been playing in that football game. Um, on Sunday, week three, against the Buffalo Bills, he took a very hard hit, uh, stood up, and couldn't even walk. He was wobbling around and came out of the game. And not that this is what it's about, but Rob and I have him in our fantasy football league. I actually have him in two leagues. Um, And so when we saw that, it was like, oh, he's out, he's done, as he should have been. And at every game, the NFL says they have these uh, not affiliated, unaffiliated neurologists, not part of the Buffalo Bills team, not part of the Miami Dolphins, unaffiliated, that is supposed to monitor players for potential concussions and other neurological injuries. So how this person who is trained could not say that he had a concussion or at least was highly suspected of having a concussion and therefore should have been out of that game blows my mind. And I'm not asking, I don't know who that person is. I'm not trying to find out. But you have to wonder, you know, in a league that is so, so popular like the NFL, And it's popular for a variety of reasons, which includes fantasy football that I just mentioned, gambling and betting. We put all this stock and investment in these players, but don't seem to really care about them in the end. Because he should have been pulled from that game, which he was, only to come back in later, play pretty well, and lead his team to victory. And so then all was forgotten. It just gets labeled as a back injury. and Let's move on. Now, his team's next game wasn't a week later. It was on Thursday night football. So he finishes the game on Sunday. I'm sure every NFL player who plays in a game on Sunday is in all sorts of pain. Sunday night into Monday day, into Tuesday probably. And we've just come accustomed to accepting that as that's part of the part of the game. It's part of the struggle. It's part of, you know, why they're in this pretty brutal sport and making hopefully a decent living off of it. But to turn around and allow him to play just four days later, to act like what happened to him on Sunday was not a concussion, to me, it's disgusting, it's despicable, it's deplorable, it's all of those things. And in all likelihood, it's driven by greed on, on so many levels. This idea of machismo, like, oh, you, you be tough, play through it. We have to be real in talking about concussions. They're probably the most serious injury. It's an injury to your brain. And then we see him take a viol- another violent hit 
on Thursday night. And I'll tell you in a little bit how I was watching the game. Well, I'll tell you right now. Two of my daughters, who are my two youngest, um, aren't that into football, as far as I know. But one of them came over and was like, I don't really understand football. And so we, I decided, okay, let me teach you a little bit of what's going on. And this game was on Prime, and I'm still getting to learn it, but Prime has all sorts of different things you can do to watch the game. They actually have a camera that's pretty much an all-22 with the next-gen stats. So we're flipping to that, flipping even to the Espanol uh, version. But when this play happened, and you see him on the ground and his hands fence, I quickly turned it off before they pretty much could even see what was happening. I didn't know at that time if if he I wouldn't have been shocked if the next day I heard that he had died. And I remember my dad always talking about watching boxing. He loved watching boxing. And I think there was a fight in the early 80s, uh, Boom Boom Mancini and his opponent actually pretty much died in the ring. And so, I mean, I don't want to see that. I know it's a violent sport. I understand that. And that that already, I struggle with that from time to time. But when we put players in a position, you know, this idea that we have to protect players from themselves, I understand that. And I And I believe that. And nobody from the Miami Dolphins did that for Tua. Nobody from the NFL did that for Tua. This unaffiliated neurologist did not do that for Tua. Very quick story of, 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 a, you know, of my own experience with concussion. And I'm not a world-class athlete. I'm not a professional athlete. I understand that. I'm playing in a Sunday adult league uh, soccer. And... It was, it was after, uh, back in the day, Jay Cutler playing against the Giants, who actually is the Bears' upcoming opponent, coincidentally, took like nine sacks, and it wasn't until after the game that it was said that he had suffered a concussion. And he claimed that he didn't even know he had a concussion. And I was like, what? How, how's that possible? Until I had my own experience and then realized, oh, it's very possible. So, you know, I won't go into the details, but anyway... Soccer, you go for a header. My head and another player on the other team's heads collided. I went to the ground. I don't remember, like, blacking out or anything. I don't know if I did or didn't. Got up, played the rest of that game, drove home, half-hour drive. Um, it wasn't until the following week, the day before our next game. So I'm Saturday. I'm trying to pack my bag. I'm getting ready. Now, about midweek, I was having some issues. I didn't know why. I, I was losing my balance, not feeling good. My wife convinced me to go to the doctor, which I never liked to do. And because I couldn't remember, I didn't remember that I had hit my head. I didn't tell them that. And the doctors didn't say I had a concuss concussion or anything like that. But it wasn't until that Saturday, getting ready for the game, that it all kind of clicked in. I was like, oh, that's what this is. And so I didn't play that week. I didn't play the next week. I think I sat out a, a two or three week stretch of time until I felt better. And then I played. And again, it's not my livelihood. You know, all of those things I understand. But the reason I bring that up is I wasn't really experiencing those symptoms till midweek. Tua barely made it till midweek and is already playing in the next game. But the difference is this. Every play that he's playing in is recorded. I mean, definitely in games, probably in practice too. Many, many eyes are on him and the other players. And to say that what happened to him last Sunday wasn't a concussion, was irresponsible, it's a lie. And obviously tons and tons of people are benefiting from, from him being out there lining their pockets with money because he's a good player. But his health and his life matter way more than all of that. 
And that brings me to another point. We need to take concussions seriously. They're injuries to your brain. Even in the aftermath of this, the Miami Dolphins coach, Mike McDaniel, I don't know the exact quote, so I'm, I'm definitely paraphrasing here, but basically said after the game, it's a good thing it was just a concussion. Now, to give it some context, when he was lying on that field, motionless, hands frozen, people didn't know if perhaps he was going to be paralyzed. And so I'm sure he meant, oh, it was just a concussion as opposed to being paralyzed. But this happens very, very often where concussions are minimized, rushing players back onto the field because it's not as visible as a high ankle sprain or some sort of muscle tear. Tua could have died on the field on Thursday or died from complications after. And we don't know what the long-term effects of having back-to-back -back concussions will be for him. And yet we minimize it. And some of the most basic things about concussions, which I assume most or all people know, aren't even being followed. He was admitted to a hospital, released pretty soon afterwards. I'm just going to hope and trust that medical professionals thought that was okay. Gets on a plane to fly back, which I'm not totally certain is okay. But then again, Coach Mike McDaniel, as a way to kind of explain that he's doing better, says that him and two are watching McGruber and laughing it up. Now, Rob and I, we do have an inside joke about McGruber. Funny movie, right? Why is this man looking at a, a screen just hours after his second concussion in four days? Because I'm counting what happened to Sunday as a concussion, even if other people want to pretend it, oh, it's just a back injury. Some of the most basic things that we advise young people who are athletes who have these concussions aren't being followed at the highest, highest level. And when this happened on Thursday, I shut the TV off. I didn't track the rest of the game. I don't care what happened to my fantasy teams that he's on. And I texted Rob, like, dude, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep doing this palace huddle or, or watch the NFL. And some time has passed, you know, for the time being, I'm going to see it through. I'm enjoying doing the podcast with, with Rob and, I hope people are enjoying listening to them. But I don't know how many more times I can see what we saw on Thursday and be okay with it. I don't think any of us should be okay with what we saw. If your star player has a concussion, he should rest until he's ready to play. And if your team loses because of that, that's what happens. The next player is supposed to try to seize that opportunity and do the best that he, he can do to, for the team. But at the end of it all, this is just a game. It's not more important than people's health. It's not more, people, more important than people's lives. And we need to really, really look at this situation for what it was and, and learn from it. There, I'll go back to one thing. Players want to play. I wanted to play soccer when I got my concussion. And my wife said, no, you, you got hurt badly, take the rest. Of course, players want to play. But those doctors, those unaffiliated doctors are there for a reason. And that's to look out for their health. But if it makes it past them, there's still coaches, there's still management that should care enough about their players as people to have their best interests at heart. 
and the NFL making billions, making trillions probably, if you if you add it up over the years, cannot care more about the money than the players. I'm always going to be in support of players. And I know some people can't get past the fact that they're millionaires. Well, the people above them are billionaires. <laughs> and and gambling industry and all these other things that are making money off these players. We can't do that at the expense of their health, of their well-being, of their lives. And so for now, I'm still gonna gonna try to watch and support my team because I do love the game and the strategy and the athleticism. But more and more, when I see these violent hits, I cringe. But then when you see violent hits and a lack of response or responsibility on the parts of those who are there to protect these players, that's where we have to draw the line. And so, you know, I, I, I can't watch much more of that. As I said, this was me trying to introduce the game to my young children. And then I shut off the, the TV and I'm not really going to rush back to showing them more. So this is something that all teams need to learn from. The league needs to learn from. And heck, even we as fans need to learn from. There shouldn't be any rhetoric about rushing people back from any injuries, but particularly concussions and a brain injury. Enjoy cheering for your team. Enjoy cheering for the players that are out there, but understand they're people. And they're already putting their bodies on the line for our entertainment. But it shouldn't cross the line all the way to the point of, of life and death which is, in my mind, almost where we were on Thursday night. So I just wanted to take some time to speak on this. Um, I have a ton more I could say, but we're keeping this, this short. And uh, this, you know, it's Saturday morning, so tomorrow uh, I'll be watching the Bears game, uh, hopefully shooting another a podcast with Rob. Um, but we might mention this briefly and move on. But I definitely wanted to get my thoughts out there on this. And if someday I abruptly stop doing the Hallis Huddle, uh, it, it's likely because of, of something along these lines. Uh, I, like I said before, I do enjoy it. Um, I've been having fun doing these podcasts with Rob. And uh, so hopefully we can continue much, much longer into the future. Um, so Thank you for listening. I had to get some stuff off my chest there and just uh, get my thoughts down on this very important issue. So uh, hopefully you're enjoying our podcast and we'll keep on listening and hopefully I can keep doing them because I have been enjoying it. Um, but, but what I saw Thursday really sickened me and uh, I, I can't take more of that. So thank you. Thank you, Hallis Huddle fans. We'll talk to you later.